The other thing that's very important is to recognize the problem of food. We live in a completely unjust food system. In America, because sugar can be produced much cheaper in places, they put all of these restrictions on the importation of sugar. And so Americans now are eating corn syrup produced in America and getting fat from this corn syrup. Because corn syrup is actually not a good source of sugar. That's an example, but I'll give you a worse example. The most important study that's been done on nutrition ever is the China study by Dr. Campbell and his researchers. This was a first-rate researcher from Harvard, teamed up uh, from Princeton, teamed up with Oxford. He was a completely credible scientist. And Premier Deng in China died of cancer of the bladder. Before he died, he set aside money to do a study of nutrition in China and disease relation. So this was independently funded. Campbell ran that team, and the result of it is the China study. Some things about the China study that are very important. The first thing is that the results were so radical that the food pyramid was changed to be more scientific. But because meat and dairy were completely minimized in the diet, the, the meat and dairy industry in the United States lobbied so hard that they actually changed the pyramid, which means science is no longer serving humanity, it's serving corporate interests. That's what it means. Science is serving corporate interests. That is wrong. In the China study, what they found is that in areas where their protein was less than 5% from meat and dairy, there was no cancer. There was no cancer. The original study was done in Hyderabad in India. And the Harvard scientists, they laughed at it and they said, oh, they must have got the cages mixed up. Campbell replicated this science repeatedly. Some things about meat and dairy consumption. First of all, the meat and dairy today is not the meat and dairy that grandma and grandpa ate. The meat that grandma and grandpa ate were free range, what they would call now organic. They, weren't, they didn't have a word for it because everything was organic 50 years ago. Organic, free range, happily raised animals on farms where they actually treated animals with some dignity. Farmers actually had relationships with their animals. They treated them with dignity. Now, and I, I, my grandfather had a cattle ranch, so I actually spent my summers on a cattle ranch and I herded cattle and I saw. My grandfather, the first time I got on a horse, before I got on the horse, he put a, a pencil in my mouth and yanked it back really hard. And he said, that's what the horse feels when you're using that bit, so don't forget it. That was my first lesson. Because that's the way people talk. They had respect for their animals. In the United States, horses are not categorized as pets. They're categorized as livestock. You can starve a horse to death in America and not go to jail, which is wrong. Animals respond to you. They respond to you. They're sentient creatures. They have nervous systems. They feel pain. They become depressed. In America, we have dogs and cats on Prozac. This is a fact. Veterinarians prescribe, prescribe Prozac for dogs in America. Don't think the dog is depressed because he's a dog. He's happy to be a dog. He's depressed because he's in a house that's depressing.